Good morning, YouTube Pie Talkers. Today we're going to talk about transmission fluid. And what I'm holding up here, this is uh, on my left here, typically new fluid, what it looks like, red. The middle is, after a short time, the red will turn a little darker. And then when you basically have a problem, the fluid will get dark and very opaque. Um, but here's the thing to understand about fluid. First of all, color is not, no longer a good guide to go by. Um, many manufacturers have their own colors now. A lot of fluids are clear. Um, this blue, this green, um, this red, um, different shades of red. But what's important is that the fluid is transparent. So if you're lucky enough to still have a car that has a dipstick, if you take the dipstick off, first of all, here's another myth. If you take a paper towel, you can wipe that dipstick from now until the cows come home. You'll always get black on the dipstick, uh, on the rag, on the paper towel. It's just the nature of the beast. You rub it, stick it back in, rub it again, you'll get black. And a lot of the Jiffy Lube places, or Quick Lube, whatever you want to call them, will use that as a selling point to sell transmission service. Not necessary. You'll never get rid of that black on the paper towel. It's just you're getting the metal from the dipstick itself. There's always some uh, dirt involved. It's not something to be concerned about. So that's something to be aware of. The other thing, if your car is under warranty and you're a person that likes to take care of their vehicle and changes the fluid regardless of what the manufacturer suggests, it's important that you use factory fluid. Document it. If you add it, save the receipt because if you have a warranty issue and they tell you you put the wrong fluid, you can show them the receipt from their parts department that you bought their fluid and they no longer have a reason not to cover their warranty because that's what they're looking for. If you don't have a dipstick, when well, a lot of cars don't, and there's a lot of argument as to why, the bottom line, it comes down to costs for them. They save, you know, bean counters, pennies on millions of cars it adds up to a lot of money. Plus, you got the manufacturing of the stick, the dipstick tube. Take all that into the equation. We're talking millions of dollars. So that is really the main reason, in my opinion, the sticks have disappeared. And they call them sealed units. Well, all transmissions have been sealed units for years, except for the dipstick. And don't be fooled by that word sealed because... Any transmission, any motor, any mechanical item, any machine can leak fluid at any time. So the other thing that's important, take note. When you park in a parking space, look before you park. See what's on the ground. When you pull out, just take a quick look, anything on the ground. If you have a severe leak, you'll see evidence of that. Not always, though. Sometimes you'll have a leak where it only blows back under pressure. So you're driving along and it blows back underneath the car. And then sort of dries so you never physically see a drip. So it's a good idea if you peek under the car at some point. I know that's not always feasible for a lot of people. But um, if you take your car in for tires, let's say, just have them raise it up and say, you see anything leaking or anything I should be concerned about. Because that's what will ruin a transmission. But getting back to transmission fluid, I'll give you an example. Toyota fluid uses a very strange fluid. Um, and it turns dark like a tar almost. There's nothing wrong with it. That's the nature of that fluid. The reason for the many different fluids, all manufacturers use different type of clutch material. Um, so there's different friction modifiers they put in the fluid. And they all change and play around with colors, a lot of it so they can, term, can determine very quickly if the wrong fluid was put in the vehicle. Will wrong fluid damage a transmission? 
I get this question a lot. The short answer is no. The technical answer is you could put a different fluid that your car should not have and alter how the shifts feel. Maybe in certain circumstances, and there's many to use as an example, BMW might be one of them, uh, some Toyotas, if you put the wrong fluid over a long period of time, it could have an effect on the transmission's longevity. I say could because, in my opinion, the jury's still out on that. Uh, the manufacturer will tell you differently because, remember, the manufacturer, like anybody that has to warranty something, is looking for a way not to pay. You know, It's like uh, if you have a house insurance and a tree falls on your house, you see what happens. Uh, the tree wasn't yours. It was on the other property. It's an act of God. Uh, it's not covered. A uh, million and one reasons. Well, the, anything that has a warranty, they do the same thing because... Let's face it, they lose money uh, fixing something under warranty. So those are things to be concerned about. Should you change your fluid? I say yes. Um, most manufacturers recommend lifetime fluid, they call it. That's a bunch of BS, especially in some of the CVT transmissions that work very hard. Um, that fluid should be changed more frequently. And I told one customer this, and he looked at me and says, wow, he said, I never thought of it that way, is, okay, the fluid, they call it lifetime, which typically speaking on a car is 100,000 miles, which they go over that many times. But now, once you have no warranty, and they say lifetime fluid, and you abide by that, they don't pay for the transmission at 120,000 miles when it goes bad. So changing the fluid is the only preventive maintenance you can do on a transmission nowadays. There's no more adjustments. Technically, there really never was, but um, we, we could debate that. But there were band adjustments back then. Now the computer compensates for everything until it can't compensate. So that's why a lot of times people have this situation. The car drove perfect yesterday, and today it's not moving. Well, what happens is the computer compensates for the changes in clutch wear and slipping, and it raises pressure and does a lot of things behind the scenes. It basically masks the problem until it can't compensate any longer. And when it can't compensate, that's the day you get in it and you have a problem because it's it compensated so much that it's damaged now. So... That's why it's like a light bulb almost. Yesterday it felt good, and today I go to the store, I get stuck. Because it tra the computer for weeks or months even was compensating for a problem that you are, I might feel it because I drive a lot of vehicles and I see the subtle changes. Most people will not. Um, so that's the reason why... It's very complicated and very um, technical. Now, if you do want to service your transmission, this is a risky business. You have to go to a known, reputable person and be that squeaky hinge. Ask the guy, I want to see the fluid you're putting in. I, I want um, documentation that's the proper fluid for my car. Save the receipts everything and make sure if hopefully if it's a shop you can watch the guy when he does it because there's a lot of um, shady transmission service or service in general practices out there and unfortunately listen the automotive business which i'm in is a rip-off business no question about it it's just like a lot of things you you have to educate yourself and be careful. Don't just say yes to everybody. Uh, ask questions. Google everything you want. You'll get an answer eventually. There's a lot of forums for your particular car. You own a BMW. There's put it, join one of their forums. Most of them are, are free. Type in a prom if you haven't, and you'll see pages and pages of people. Oh, yeah, I had the same thing. Do this. 
you have to do this unless you want to risk uh, spending a lot of money for no reason. Uh, very important. Unfortunately, uh, women, it's worse because they're like a target because most, it's assumed most women don't know much about their vehicle. So uh, I could tell you stories and stories. Uh, I'll tell you a real quick one. A friend of mine bought a new vehicle. There was a recall at the time of the recall. He had 15,000 miles. His wife takes it in for the recall. Sitting in the plush waiting room with the nice coffee maker, the big screen TV, the free Wi-Fi, the playpen for the kids. And the service writer comes out and says, oh, ma'am, you need struts really bad. Now, it's a new car with 15,000 miles on it. There's no way it needs struts. Luckily, she called her husband. Her husband says, don't do it. Okay, so he then it's a friend of mine. He brought it to me. We put it in the air. We looked at the struts. There's no sign of leakage. The car drives perfect. There's no noises. Struts is a big money maker for uh, uh, shops. And it's one of them items that it's really, you can't pin it down 100% and say that struts uh, good. It's a feel thing. But basically, if a strut doesn't leak and the car has no noises and you shake the car up and down and it, it, it doesn't bounce like a basketball continuously, your struts are good. And struts should be good at least to 80, 90,000 miles, depending on the roads. In New York, the roads are terrible, so your struts may not. Uh, get as much mileage on him. But at 15,000 miles, it sure as hell did not need struts. He was upset. He called the service, uh, the owner of the dealer. Oh, I'll look into this right away, and I'll call you back. He never got a call back. And every time after that, she brought it in. For any kind of routine, they offered free services. Uh, they tried to sell her struts. And they tried to sell her wipers. And they tried to sell her tire rotations. And and that's the reason a lot of times they do the free services to get you back. So when you see a plush, again, is always an exception to the rule. But generally speaking, remember, nothing is free. So when you see this plush waiting room with the beautiful couch and the nice TV and the great donuts and the nice coffee station and somebody's paying for that. And guess who it is? the customer sitting in that waiting room. You're paying for all that flash, that nice coffee. So if you want nice coffee, go to Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts or the coffee house down the street. When you want coffee and breakfast, don't go to your car dealer because you're paying triple, three times what you would pay in a coffee shop for that coffee because that's the goal, to make you comfortable and they're a dealer, so most people figure, well, the dealer, I bought the car here, they're not going to tell me something wrong. And they have the perfect scenario to extract as much money from you as possible. Again, it's not always the case, but I'll tell you what. If I told this to uh, ten people, eight will be paying for something they didn't need. And most uh, people will say yes to certain items like, oh, it's only $40, $40 more for wipers. All right, put them on. You know, meanwhile, your wipers were good. Wipers are a bad example because they do go bad a lot. But um, you get the point of what I'm saying. Uh, be careful. You know, it wouldn't be a, a hard thing to even sit down with your wife and tell her certain things about a car so she's aware of uh, when to spot a potential scam. Okay, uh, so I hope that helps, and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you.